financial report? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, Mr. Superintendent, board members. Um, the report in, from you, in front of you is for the month of January uh, 2015. Uh, <clears throat> it goes up to and including January 31st. The first page you'll see, you know, we're maintaining our previous uh, trends. Uh, as of year-to-day January for FY15, we had collected $593.4 million out of an estimated 801.5 million. That 593.404 in a year ago, a fiscal year a year ago, was a 556.393, so we're ahead about $37 million. In terms of expenditures, uh, we had spent 52.3% of the budget. Now, this is before the mid-year budget adjustments. Mid-year budget adjustments, you, you recall, were voted, I think, on the 2nd of February, and this is the January report. So in next month's report, we'll pick up the 8.8 .8 or $9 million of the mid-year adjustments. But the uh, expenditure percentage of 52.3% of this year's budget as of the end of January uh, is a better than a straight-line basis. On a straight-line basis, we'd be at 58.3%. We spent $418.4 million. The budget is larger, of course, than last year. Last year, at this point, we had spent $395.4 million. If you go to the third page in, you can see how the trend of revenue collection compares to our projected position. We projected to be at $560.6 million in collections at the end of January. We're actually at $593.4 million collected, or ahead of projections by $32.7 million. $28.7 million of that is the local side. We, we are ahead a little bit on the state component of our revenue, but we're ahead on the local side, and 95% of that, of course, is ad valorem. We're at $28.7 million. We projected to be at $361.3 million. We're at $390.1 million. Moving on through the report, uh, I'd like to refer you to the next page of page 13, uh, which indicates for the month of January, we spent uh, $30 million more than we collected. We disbursed in January 75.2. We collected about 45, and so we spent $30 million, 75,000 more than our collections, which is normal at this point in the year. Page 14 indicates the operating surplus history. Uh, we have an operating surplus considering uh, those expenditures versus revenue of $215.9 million, but of course, the true fund balance figure in that number is $40 million. We hope to hold and add to that as we get to the end of the year. On page 40, there's an emergency purchases page. A lot of this still uh, relates to the uh, air conditioning vandalism situation. And the final page of the report, of course, is the uh, variance analysis report. Uh, on a variance basis, we are projected to be at 560.6 in revenue. We're at 593, so we're 32.7 million ahead. On the collection side, of, uh, relative to revenue, we are uh, behind our projected position relative to expenditures. We are projected to be at 420.2, and we're at 418.4 million in expenditures. And so the trend is favorable in both cases. We're ahead on revenue and slightly behind uh, in expenditures. That's the January report. Is there any discussion? Mr. Orson? And this may not be directly for Dr. Bell, but it just an opportunity. Uh, Superintendent Thurman, I was just wondering at some point we could, if we could, if we have any update on what I assume that the CAB Police Department's investigating these thefts we've had in terms of the HVA systems, have they given us any update? And if not, at some point, I think probably everybody would love to get an update if they have any on the status of the <coughs> investigations. Yes, sir. I'll be happy to do that. And our own police department is continuing to work. Uh, the one good bit of news uh, Mr. Smith shared with me about two weeks ago that we've had no additional thefts, which is a good thing, but uh, I'll have to seek more detail in terms of apprehension of those who committed those crimes uh, at the beginning of the school year. Dr. Irwin. Hey, Dr. Bell. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. 
I'm just wondering if you had an update on the comparability assessment. I can defer to the superintendent. We had a, a meeting with the state on the 24th. There were uh, a number of uh, issues brought forward. It was a good meeting. Uh, we had a great meeting with uh, Dr. Lunsford and a large contingent of uh, state leaders, uh, uh, not just as it relates to uh, Title I, but also with special ed, which was very important. And uh, it was an all-day meeting. Uh, I was there uh, through most of the meeting. Uh, Dr. Bell, Dr. Beasley, large contingent of individuals. Dr. Crawford from uh, DeKalb, very positive. Uh, we shared a tremendous amount of information. Uh, and I think we made some significant progress, actually, in resolving this issue. And, uh, and the one thing that uh, we had uh, advocated for that I think was, I think, sits at the cornerstone of us resolving this going forward uh, our position uh, from the very beginning looked at it historically, and our commitment to providing uh, education and training opportunities to special needs kids in the most least restrictive environment was really at the crux of the uh, disparity or the imbalance as it relates to those schools that serve high percentages of special needs kids and those schools that do not. Uh, and I'm getting ready to not remember her name, Miss. Debbie Gay uh, was in the meeting. She leads the special ed effort at the, uh, effort at the state. Uh, she was in the meeting, and uh, she played a critical role because uh, she shared with her state colleagues that she's worked in DeKalb for 30 years. And uh, she had been one of the people who really laid the foundation and built the DeKalb Special Needs Program, which is preeminent uh, in the state of Georgia. And she validated, along with what we have presented, that our decades-long commitment uh, to spending not just uh, investing, not just what's required, but at a level beyond that, because we see that as part of our fundamental primary mission. And uh, she played a very, very important role in doing that. And uh, so that, I think, set the tone for us to move forward in a very positive way. So. One quick question. Are we still set at, what, $2.1 million with them, or is that still being negotiated? It's still being negotiated. <laughs> okay. Mr. McMahon. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> and I just want to commend Superintendent Thurman about having the discussion with the state about the, the realities of their expectations with, with our district with the districts throughout the state of Georgia and just having that tough conversation that rarely is had with our state leaders to be able to fully, for them to fully understand what happens in our classrooms. And I wanna, I wanna thank you for having that discussion that rarely gets had. So thank you. No, thank you, Mr. McMahon. And, and it was good for us too, we learned a lot. And that were details and nuances uh, that we were familiar with, but that we gained. It was a, it was a conversation between uh, two groups of individuals who dedicated their lives to providing educational opportunities for students uh, in DeKalb and across the state of Georgia. And uh, it, it, it's where we need to be as a district, mutual respect. I agree, and it's also at the national level, since I was not here last month, but I was up in Washington, D.C., having the same conversations about our IDEA population with our congressmen and our elected senators up in Washington. And they are, they're learning from us. They don't have all the answers, but they're advocating on our behalf. So it's that collaboration at the state and federal level that um, means the most here in our district. So thank you for your leadership. Mr. Jester. Um, Dr. Bell, on um, page 41, that last page, Instruction, we're roughly four or five million under in projected instruction. Can you uh, talk about that? The last page. Yeah, you, you're referring to the variance report? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the year to date actual is 193.4 million. Uh, the year to date projected was 197.8 million. This doesn't really compare to last year, and as you know, Mr. Jester, we upfunded a good bit when we did away with the furlough days. On, on, a, on, a, on the basis of how we do the projections, it looks like there is a $4.3 million unexpended amount 
in the structure. So that's I'm just not certain of the reasons for that. But. Gotcha. Does anybody know why we might be four million dollars under? Well, we'll be happy to look at it in more detail and provide you a written response. It's, it's on, you know, it could be just a timing issue. We're not certain, but we'll be happy to provide you a written response. Gotcha. If um, we're projected, if it ends up being four or five, ten million dollars under, um, perhaps we can look into some sort of um, adjustment on projections for that, some sort of official, um, you know. We have to Project determine and working with curriculum and instruction what the reasons are, yes. Yeah, that would be great. All right. And um, you mentioned last uh, meeting um, these the re variance reports are, are challenging to put together. And um, do you guys regularly look at variance reports? I don't recall making that particular statement, but they are, they are difficult to do because you're, you know, you have certain variables that you've got to put in the upcoming year that will just change where you were in the previous year. But yes, we do a big sort of trend analysis and make adjustments relative to actual variables that we know are coming. So you guys regularly meet and look at variance reports? When you say you guys, who are you referring to? The senior administration, maybe on a weekly or every other week. We review expenditures quarterly with all the senior cabinet members and a lot of their staffs, but the variance report is really built by finance. Right. So these reports you look at, they have variances on them, right? I don't know. What, what reports are you referring to? The reports that you're talking about that you guys look at? No, I said quarterly we review expenditures oh, with the quarterly. division heads. Yes. they. They don't have any real variances. They just have straight line expenditure percentages relative to the quarter. Gotcha. Is this common for government entities to not look at variance reports? Because I know most billion dollar companies look at variance reports quite frequently. Mr. Chair, if the board would like to establish a policy on when and how we looked at them, we would be happy to entertain it. That's just not something that uh, we currently do right now. Mr. Bell looks at it on a quarterly basis. Mr. Bell looks at it continuously right. we, on a daily basis. But that's his job. That's right. and, and we uh, review it when we're building every monthly report. Okay? So it's not like they just set aside. But. Gotcha. I mean, I would look for you for guidance on the variance reports. I just it seems like a, an industry standard for um, businesses with large budgets. Thank you. That's it. Thanks. Chair. Uh, Mr. McMahon. Thank you, Chair. And <coughs> Mr. Jester, I appreciate your uh, questions regarding the variance reports. As recently, uh, Dr. Bell, when did we start the variance report? It was like a, was it a year ago or a year and a half? It wasn't too long after I got here. Right. I can't remember exactly when. So from the creation of the variance report, it was when the when I got on the board two years and two months ago, it, there, that wasn't even part of the financials. And um, so we were asking for accountability regarding uh, swings in expectations versus accountability expenditures. And so it is incumbent upon the board, and I think there's a great opportunity for us as the policymakers to look at best practices for financial review. I know Mr. Bell and his staff, like the superintendent said, they review it on a daily, weekly, we get monthly reports with a variance. <clears throat> so with that being said, I think it would be a, a good practice for us once we have our organizational meetings, Chair, and going into the deep dive on finance, and I know you and Dr. Irwin are working on board retreat coming up later on this month, right? That we can potentially add that to our discussion topics and work on creating policy and anticipation of fiscal 16 budget and working in some metrics for transparency and accountability, All right? Sure, and I assume the uh, board finds these variance reports as useful as I do. And I know years, so right now we have variance reports on the upper level categories 
And years ago in the past, we used to get uh, variance reports on these subcategories. And uh, Dr. Bell had mentioned that would take uh, a lot of work. And uh, if it's not useful for us, then it, we shouldn't burden the um, finance department with something like that. But um, that's something we can talk about in our, our retreat. Thank you, Mr. Jester. Uh, is, there any, is there any opposition to placing this item on the consent agenda for this evening? Hearing none, this item will be placed on the consent agenda.